I don't think it is too controversial to say that puzzle games are at their best when they utilize deep rule sets with a lot of emergent properties that are explored throughout the game. However, there is a small section of the puzzle genre that I find extremely compelling because of their unique perspective on puzzle structure and emergent systems. Today we are going to explore the Zaktronics puzzle games to see why their focus on expressive problem solving and optimization is so uniquely compelling among puzzle games. As a brief disclaimer before I get into the rest of the video, I have not played TIS 100, Shenzhen IO, or Exapunks. Much of what I say in this video will probably apply to those three games, but I do not have first-hand experience with them to confirm it for myself. Just keep in mind that for the purposes of this video, when I say the Zaktronics games, I will be referring to Space Chem, Infinifactory, and Opus Magnum. With that said, let's begin. The majority of puzzle games are designed to be solved with a small set of intended solutions. This works well for many games, and it is a perfectly valid way to design a puzzle game. However, the Zaktronics games aren't like this. Instead of discovering the one valid solution to any given problem, players are given a problem to overcome and a versatile toolset to overcome it with. This fundamental change ripples through the design of these games, and it allows them to explore areas of design that cannot be explored in a typical puzzle game. The backbone upon which any Zaktronics game rests is the toolset that the game gives its players to overcome its puzzles. These tools allow for much more player expression than the tools given by most other puzzle games. Whether it's Space Chem's Waldos, Infinifactory's Conveyors, or Opus Magnum's Arms, the player can utilize these same elements in a wide variety of ways, and their design allows for a wide range of emergent strategies. One major difference to note is that unlike the Zaktronics games, the majority of puzzle games get their emergence from their level design, and other factors that aren't entirely within the player's control. Sure, in Portal you can get a crazy amount of speed by putting a portal on the ceiling and the floor, but your ability to do this depends on the game presenting you with the proper level design to use this emergent property to your advantage. However, the strategies that the player discovers throughout these Actronics games are going to be useful in a wider variety of levels throughout the game. Using regular blocks to buffer items in Infinifactory is an emergent strategy that can be used on almost every level in the game, and the player can choose to work it into their solution or not. It is important to note that these games never go out of their way to tell the player about these emergent strategies, which is completely fine because a lot of the enjoyment these games provide comes from discovering unexpected, yet useful applications for your tools. Even Opus Magnum, the game with the most hands-on tutorial, only informs the player about the function of each piece by giving players a specialized puzzle that explores each piece's function. However, these tutorials only scratch the surface of what a player can do with those pieces. For the rest of the game, players are left on their own to discover the nuances of the system for themselves. This approach to teaching mechanics fits with the more freeform and open Zaktronic style of puzzle game, because these games are about discovering new uses for the same tools you have been using for the entire game. For instance, in Opus Magnum, to get this curved shape, a player might use one of these triple bonders, but eventually, they might realize that they can do the same thing with only a single bonder. The Zaktronics games are fueled by discoveries like this, when the player sees a strategy that has been there the entire time. These revelations are some of the most satisfying parts of a Zaktronics game, and without these deep tool sets, these games would be flat and boring. However, all of the work that the developers put towards crafting a flexible, unique, and emergent system would be worthless if these games didn't give their players goals that encourage the use of that system. As developer Steve Swink points out in his book, Game Feel, one of the primary functions of a goal is to push the player into exploring the game's possibility space. 
Without a goal, players will be left to aimlessly fiddle with the system, and the game will become boring very quickly. Introducing a goal gives the player something to strive for, and it gives them an incentive to explore the system's possibility space to the fullest. The Zactronics games use their goals very effectively, to push the players into crafting solutions on their own. The game gives you some input, and it is your job to turn that input into the desired output. As the player progresses, the outputs become more complex, which pushes the player to gain a deeper understanding of their tools. The depth that players explore throughout the game wouldn't be discovered without the gentle hand of goals, encouraging the player to exploit the interesting emergent properties of their toolset. Because these systems are so emergent, and the players explore these systems on their own, two different players will employ radically different solutions. This is what I meant when I said that these games have expressive problem solving. Players can make solutions that prioritize different traits. Some players might want to make a machine that quickly produces the desired output, while others might make lean, efficient machines. Comparing these Actronics games to most other puzzle games, we can see some of the advantages that expressive problem solving has over pre-authored puzzle structures. The pre-authored style is good at certain things, but one disadvantage that these sorts of puzzle games have is that repeat playthroughs aren't nearly as interesting. Looking to the structure of these games, we see that most puzzle games are designed to communicate an interesting idea to the player with each puzzle. For instance, these witness puzzles show the player that by simply changing the location of the endpoint, an entirely new solution will be needed, even though the colors of the tiles have not changed. These puzzles are great, and they communicate their ideas in a meaningful way, but once the player knows the solution, these puzzles have nothing more to teach the player, and thus their value to the player is greatly diminished. Because of this, Traditional puzzle games tend to be a bit disposable after the player's first playthrough. This isn't necessarily a criticism of these games, because they understand that they are one-time experiences and are designed with that in mind. After all, some of my favorite games of all time are one-shot puzzle games that are meant to be played once, or maybe twice if you're lucky. With that said, the brilliance of the Zactronics approach is that these games hold up remarkably well on repeat playthroughs. The freeform nature of these puzzles means that they will always have something new to teach the player. This further learning is encouraged through the Zactronics histogram system. After beating a Zactronics puzzle, the players are given histograms that rate the player's solution along three criteria, and show how the player's solution compares to the solutions from other players. While it is theoretically possible for a player to make a perfect solution on their first attempt, there will usually be room for the player to improve their score. Sure, you might be able to make a missile, but can you do it faster? Can you do it with less blocks? These other people figured out a better way to solve the puzzle. Why don't you try beating them? This approach even gives highly skilled players something to shoot for on future playthroughs, because of how the game grades your puzzle. Getting an above average speed score will make it very difficult to also get an above average efficiency score at the same time. So even if you already have a great speed score, you haven't figured out the most efficient solution yet. Because the game judges three criteria, any particular puzzle can theoretically be optimized three separate times, and each attempt will require a very different approach. Just compare a fast solution to an efficient solution and you'll see what I mean. The result of all these design decisions is that each puzzle has many layers of depth. If the player is satisfied by simply completing the game, there is nothing forcing them to go back. But if the player wants to, there is a world of unexplored solutions still waiting to be discovered. In the world of puzzle games, there aren't many games like these Actronics games. As others have pointed out, the Zactronics games are less about solving puzzles, and are more about solving problems. In a way, the Zactronics games are more reflective of real-world problems than most puzzle games. In real life, your problems aren't pre-built to only have one interesting solution. Problems in the real world are complex and layered. There will usually be a lot of approaches you could take, 
and you need to figure out which one will be the most effective at achieving your goals. All you have is your ability to think outside of the box with the tools that you're given. And this is exactly what the Zactronics games are all about. Real chemistry isn't like this. Factories aren't nearly this simple, and alchemy doesn't even exist. But at the end of the day, these games aren't really about testing your skills in any of those fields. Fundamentally, these games are about critical thinking and the process of problem solving itself. And that is going to be useful no matter what you're doing or who you are. So the next time you consider checking out a puzzle game, maybe consider the Zaktronic series. These games will put you to the test. But maybe in doing so, they will give you insight into the simple joy of solving problems. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I've wanted to talk about the Zaktronic games for a very long time now, and this video has gotten me to ask myself why I really like these games, and also, I, I just wanted to mention that the channel recently hit 1,000 subscribers. I, I cannot thank you guys enough because without you guys, uh, I, I would have never made it to this point. On that note, if you want to help me even more, I have launched or will be launching a Patreon. Donating to this Patreon is extremely optional. Seriously, do not donate to this if you do not, one, have the money, or two, don't think I deserve the money. And even if you do think I deserve the money, there are probably other creators who deserve this money more than I do. However, if you do decide to donate, I cannot thank you enough. You'll be able to find more information about rewards over on my page. This has been Chariot Rider. Have a good day.